happened to join a nominal college, and uh, there I understood that my fate is sealed. Now I'll not be like the best IITians or NITs in the world. Moreover, I joined in bioengineering, and the first day the seniors told me that you guys have no job after four years. Some IT company might take you. That's that's your fate. So essentially, I understood that my this is a dead end. So I have to do something different, and there. I started experimenting with science and technology. Instead of thinking about future, I thought let's let's do something in the present, and that's how my journey towards projects starts. I started doing projects in robotics to drug delivery and biodiesel and all. And like that, once I happened to enter into a conference hall like this, very cool. There was a professor from Harvard who was speaking about these exceptional materials called as carbon nanotubes, and he said. These materials are like 300 times stronger than steel, are just one sixth of its weight. Electrical conductivity as high as copper, thermal conductivity as good as diamond. So I thought, yes, this is my material. I'm going to get this and do something big out of it. And I thought I'll make a bio sensor out of it. Carbon nanotube essentially looks like this, but not this big. It's like one billionth of a meter. So that's small it is. I just googled out the price, and it was like per gram costed around $400, the quality that I wanted per gram. So I just called up my dad first and said, "Dad, can you just send me some ten thousand dollars? I just want to buy a few hundred grams of carbon nanotubes." And he said in a very nice manner, "Try something else." So uh, and then I went to my professor. I asked her, "Can I synthesize this in the lab?" She said, "You are you are just an undergrad. You know you should do something else, very small projects and all." Then I was not going to stop. So I thought there should be some method. I said, "Just Google it again." To find out how it is produced, I understood one thing: you require a big furnace, you require high temperature, like 600,000, 200 degrees Celsius, and all. You need to have carbon-containing gases, and then you need to have this catalyst. So I know this: every furnace in the world has got this high temperature, this carbon-containing gases, in a vacuum atmosphere. So all I needed was a catalyst and a substrate to coat over that. So my next target was to do, get the catalyst. My guide told me that, okay. I'll give you some chemicals, but you cannot work after 5 p.m. So I need to take that chemicals. I took it to my hostel. I started preparing it in my room itself, and then uh, we need to have the substrate. So the substrate was like typically platinum, alumina kind of things, which was again non-affordable for me. So there were some construction workers. They had this cement and sand. So we just went to them, explained the project. They understood nothing. They said, "I'll give you whatever you want. You just go from here." And they gave us some cement. And we started experimenting with our own substrate. We made our cement sand substrate in the backyard of the hostel. Luckily, at 9:30 to 10 o'clock, no one saw us. It was safe. So, after all this preparation, the next target was to get some kind of industry to test. There was a small rice mill nearby my university. So we went there. So I sent my team first. They said they went and gave the big lecture, uh, and they said they will, we will reduce your pollution. We will do that and this. They said we just pay thousand rupees per year for pollution. How does that matter us? So next day, I went to them. I said the same things, but I said, "You know, you the, you are going to be the next billionaire if this technology works out." He understood what money is, and then he said, "Yeah, you can work. We will help you." And that's that's how we started. You can see my friend holding the substrate in a traditional manner. We just expose it in the path of fuel gas, and we get carbon nanotubes over it. It's as simple as that. People usually think that carbon nanotubes might look something like a big tube or something like this, but not exactly. It's like a black powder, but it has Various applications. You have to see it under transmission electron microscope or scanning electron microscope to exactly see such kind of tubes. That's how it exactly looks like under these microscopes. We convert the carbon emissions from the industries into a valuable product, you know, value similar to that of gold, into carbon nanotubes, which has got many applications. Like Obayashi Corporation, along with NASA, is building a space elevator, and it's entirely made of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are also used as biosensors to detect cancer, even to cure cancers in certain cases. Nano robots are possible with carbon nanotubes. Flexible devices, composites. So the applications are endless. So we thought, okay, now we have to scale it up to do something, you know, big. We went to an industry. We said we'll fix an equipment which will continuously convert your emissions into carbon nanotubes. That's how it will exactly work. Like we'll have a catalyst which will be sprayed. Continuously in the furnace, which will interact with the gases are collected by the electromagnet upside, and this will continue and reduce their emission in large scale, and thereby producing a very valuable product like carbon nanotubes. We first tried this technology in a rice mill, where the temperature was approximately 200 and less than that. So why, we thought, why not in automobiles? Assume every automobile in the world has this kind of 
equipment which will be fixed at the back of it and will continuously convert their emission into nanotubes. You go to your petrol pump, you fix this equipment, they replace it for you, and they provide 50% discount in the fuel charges. How great it would be like. You know, you're reducing the fuel charges and producing something very useful out of it. That's, that's what our aim is further. Finally, if you think, this technology of carbon nanotubes and carbon emissions are very much correlated. This can only have a huge environmental impact if it is applied on a large scale, or else it will be a local impact, not a global impact. So we want this technology to spread in everywhere. Every industry should use this technology at least out of greed of making money <laughs> so that uh, you know, it will make some good impact on the environment and also produce a very important product like carbon nanotube, which will have large scale of applications, providing thereby providing many employment opportunities around the world. So that's my aim. Thank you.